I want to speak to us on what I call looking back. There is a place for looking back in the life of a Christian. You know, the English word for it is retrospecting or retrospection, where you sit down and look back. We usually advise that it is done at the end of the year. You look back at the year and do a review of that year. But the truth is that why should you wait to the end of the year to retrospect? Actually, I believe it should be done every day. As you lay down on the bed to sleep, do a little review, do a little appraisal of the day, the activities of the day, what you did, what you didn't do, what you said, what you didn't say, how you treated people. So I believe that it is so, so, so important that we do that. And one of the major reasons why I believe we should retrospect, like a popular songwriter said, he said, count your blessings. Count your blessings. When you count your blessings, you will notice that God has been good, that God has been faithful to you. You know, something that drew my attention to counting your blessings was over 10 years ago, where the year ended and I was retrospecting and I was like, oh, this year has come now and it has ended and I didn't achieve, I didn't achieve the things I wanted to, all my plans, all my purposes, all the things I wanted to do, I did not achieve them. And I sensed the Holy Spirit saying to me, do a little checkup of your finances. I'm like, how would I do it? He said, calculate your tithe because you're a faithful tither. So calculate it. And you have an idea of the amount of money that have passed through your hands. And that was the greatest shock of my life. That changed my perspective when it comes to things like that. Complaining, oh, the year has ended again. And I couldn't do this. I couldn't do that. When the year started, I said I was going to do this, do that. I set several goals. But after that retrospection, I stopped complaining about that. I found out that truly, if we don't achieve the things we wanted to achieve, especially when it comes to financial goals or any whatever it is that you believe God for, I found out that it is not God, it is us. But regarding financial goals, I discovered that it is my lack of financial management that has cost me that year, that the plans I set to achieve that year, I couldn't achieve them because I was poor in managing my finances. So it wasn't God. It wasn't God. So that's one of the benefits of retrospect. The Bible says something in Isaiah 46 verse 9, and you can add verse 10 to that. It says, remember the former things. This is God asking us to remember the former things. This is God asking us to go back, think back, retrospect. I praise your life. He says, for I am God. You will discover that God is God, that God has been good, that God has been faithful. When you carry out a lot of retrospection in your life, you'll find that God has done a lot of things that somehow, it's not that we weren't grateful at the time, but there's something that about human beings. We tend to forget things easily. <laughs> we tend to just forget easily. And we, are, well, we wonder why things are not working, why that is not happening, it's just because we forget things easily. <laughs> it says, remember the former things rather, for I am God and there is none other, and there is none like me. One of the things that also happens when you retrospect is that you become grateful, like I've said. You have this assurance that God is also faithful then you build up your faith. Don't worry, I'm going to give you a list of advantages and I really love you to take them down today. I'm going to give you a long list of advantages of retrospect. So get your notebooks out or your pen or if you're taking notes digitally, open your notepad on your phone or your tablet, your iPhone, your computer, whatever electronic device that you have and note the benefits I'm going to give you today. Hallelujah. So declaring... The end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things are not yet done. So when you remember the former things, also strengthen your faith that if God has done that in the past, he's able to do many things in the future. So let's just dive into the benefits of looking back. Number one, it helps you trace the course 
of a matter or a challenge or a problem or whatever. You want to know the history of that challenge to pinpoint where it started. You are trying to investigate the cause of that sickness, the cause of this, the cause of that. So in a bid to find out the reason for something, you have to retrospect. You have to look back. In this particular example of tracing problems from the past in, in 2 Samuel chapter 21, was when all of a sudden, David was, of course, king. Things were going on well. The country experienced a famine, a severe one. And I love David. David would always go to inquire of the Lord, and he did. When he went to ask God, God, of course, told him the reason for the famine. He said, it's because of your predecessor, Saul. He flooded the covenant the nation had with the Gibeonites. You remember the Gibeonites, I think, in uh, Joshua chapter 9 or so, so, 9, I believe. Memory serves me right. They've just come out of the promised land, defeated Jericho, for we AI, I believe. And the fear of the nation was spreading throughout the Middle East. So the Gibeonites knew they were next. So they pretended as if they are a nation far away and tried to reach a truce with Joshua. Joshua did not do what... David did. He did not inquire of the Lord. He believed them. And they cut a covenant that they would not destroy them. What happened? They continued their conquest and they discovered the next nation they supposed to conquer was this Gibeon. And Joshua could not because of the covenant. So Saul flouted that covenant. And because of that, famine came into the land. So going back to history, they were able to pinpoint the reason for the famine, the reason for the problem, the reason for that challenge. That is one benefit of retrospection. Another benefit of retrospection, of looking back, as I, tit as I titled this message as, is for one's mental health. At times you may be going through a lot of struggles. You know, things are not working the way they ought to work. Bills are piling up. You're having challenges here and there. The year is about to end. You look back, like I said earlier. Some of the things you wanted to achieve this year, mm, you look back and you're like, oh God, I did not even scratch my year's goal. And the year is ending again. And every year that ends, you get older. So yeah, maybe you're not in the right place emotionally. You're sad. You know, looking back. None of the wrong things have happened in the past, but are the good things that have happened. Reminiscing on the good times, the good, you know, times, the good miracles you've experienced or the good experiences you've had in the past helps your mental health. Helps your mental health. And mental health is so important. That is so health. This bridge between your spirit and your external extremities, your body, your flesh, and circumstances around you is your soul. So then, that means that your soul is so important. We just finished Ephesians chapter 6 and we ended with the armor of God where we discover that that armor of God majorly guards your soul because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Your soul is the battlefield. It is important that you have good mental health, like your emotions, your will, your reasoning, every facet of your soul is in a good place, that you experience peace in your soul. Because without peace in your soul, faith will not work. And when faith does not work, guess what? The things you want changed will not change because faith is the force that changes things. Faith is the force that attracts Things to you that brings those things that you believed God for to you. So when there is no peace, you're losing your peace. When you sense depression creeping in, you ought to do something about it. And one of the things is just like what David did, encouraging himself in the Lord. When his men came down on him, he went somewhere and recounted 
the mercies, the goodness, the past miracles of God, and he strengthened himself. So times when you are downcast, it is always good to think back at God's goodness and God's mercy. I'm going to give you two scriptures on that. First Chronicles 16 verse 12 says, Remember his marvelous works, miracles of the past, which he has done, his wonders, and the judgment of his mouth. Where you read, remember that you are encouraged. I like what the one Jeremiah wrote in Lamentations. He was going through that agony. Possibly he wrote this lamentation when he was put in the pit, in the prison, in the dungeon by the king because of his prophecy against the king. He says something in Lamentations chapter 3, verse 21. He said, this I recall in my mind. So he was going through that emotional turmoil. What did he do? He retrospected. He retrospected. He looked back. He looked back. And what did he do? He said, therefore, I have hope. So when you look back, when you recount God's works, his goodness, his miracles, you have hope. You start expecting better to happen. You start expecting good things to come to you. Hallelujah. He said, through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. I love this verse. He looked back. He recalled. He had hope. He reminded himself of God's mercies. He said, no matter the problem I'm faced with, no matter the challenge before me, I know that God is faithful. I know that God is good. And his mercies endured forever. So this present challenge will not consume me. Oh, if you believe that, shout a big amen. Say amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. If this message is speaking so to you, shout a big amen. He said, "For because his compassions fail not. He said, they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. The faithfulness of God talks about how consistent God is. How consistent he is to show you mercy. How consistent he is to make grace multiply to you. So no matter how hard the nation or the economy is, as circumstances become, God's mercies will come true for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So when you do some of these things, it will reduce anxiety. You know, it makes you want to thank God for life. Yes, things are not working. Things are bad. Expectations are not met. But you're alive. You're breathing. You're healthy. It makes you want to thank God and be grateful. Let me hurry on. The next thing that, looking back, helps us do is that it helps us not to be forgetful. At times we forget, like I said, mentioned earlier, we forget the things that God has done for us in the past. Not because we want to, but at times life happens. Challenges come. You have this brief amnesia. So when you look back, you remind yourself again. Hallelujah. Romans 15 verse 4 says, For whatsoever things that we are written before, we are written for our learning. So go back to God's word. Go back to God's word. Remind yourself. You know, sometimes I said I'm going to tell my wife to, that we need to start doing. We need to start journaling miracles. No matter how small that miracle is, journal it. Write it down. If you have a journal. If you don't, buy one and call it a testimony journal. You woke up that morning and you, you are reminded of the miracle of waking up. Write it down and say, Father, I thank you for waking me up. That's a miracle. Any small mercies, write it down. There's something about journaling that helps our mental health, that makes this revelation not just what you hear and forget, but it, it is tattooed, written on the fleshy part of your heart. The fleshy part of your heart. So 103, I believe, says, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not his benefits. And say, at least in the things that he has done and he's doing for us. I think that is amazing. The fourth thing, or the four benefits of looking back, it helps us learn from our mistakes. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11 says, 
Now, all things happen to them as examples. Talking about the children of Israel, when they left the promised land, when they left Egypt and they were traveling to the promised land. He says, learn from their mistakes. And they made a lot of mistakes. Remember, the generation that left, the, the, that left Egypt did not enter the promised land. So when we look back, don't only look at the good things, also remember the mistakes you made, you made and vouch not to make them anymore. Avoid those mistakes. It was written for our learning. So we need to learn from our mistakes. He said that through patience and comfort of the scriptures, we have hope. Now, all these things happen for examples that they are written for our admonition. So learning from people's mistakes, learning from, this, from Bible stories, and in this case, from the children of Israel and their mistakes in the wilderness, we ought to avoid those mistakes so that we will not stagnate, so that we will not lose the promise that God has made to us. So looking back at people's mistakes, looking back at our own mistakes too, helps us avoid them in the future. Hallelujah. Malachi 3 verse 16 says, Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and God listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name. This is why I want you all to start journaling. Start journaling. That is your book of remembrance. It will help you remember the miracles of God. Hallelujah. The next reason or the next benefit for looking back is it helps us predict the future. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 9 that whatever that has been or will be has been. Meaning anything that will happen in the future has already happened in the past. So looking back at the past, it helps us predict the future. And this is so true. It helps us predict the future. That is why you look at your past mistakes in the past. You vow, you vow not to do them again. or else, If not, you will repeat the consequences of those past mistakes if you continue doing them. So the past helps us to predict the future. That's one of the reasons or benefits of retrospection. And a benefit of retrospection, should I give you more scriptures on that? But I would say that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if God has done this miracle for you yesterday, when you look back, especially in the face of a trial, when you look back, especially in the face of a challenging period, remembering that God has come through for you in the past, that he brought that miracle to you in the past, what happens? You have strength, faith to face the future. You can predict what will happen in that present challenge. You will know that you know that you know that this present challenge will also be handled by God because you look back. So that helps you predict the future. Hallelujah. The next reason for looking back is that it gives you strength and encouragement in the times of trouble, in current trials. That is where David comes in. When he looked back, I've already quoted that scripture, 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6. And David encouraged himself in the Lord. So in the, prayer, in, the, in, the, in the presence of a trial, he looked back and received strength from the recollection of miracles of the past. Another reason for or benefit for looking back is faith building. I've already talked about that in passing. Remembering God's promises builds your faith in God, strengthens your resolve, makes you confident, makes you know that God will come true for you in the times of trouble. That is why Hebrews 11 was written, that hallmark of faith, where the Bible listed out men that walked in faith and the result they got. So reading that scripture is also looking back. Sitting down to recount past miracles that you've experienced is also looking back. They all strengthen your faith. The next benefit of looking back is that it makes you want to be grateful. You know, it kickstarts a grateful posture. It makes you want to thank God 
makes you want to worship God. Re forget not Psalm 103 verse 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul. The psalmist was telling his soul to step into thanksgiving, to cultivate the posture of thanks. He says, why? He says, and forget not all his benefits. Isn't that amazing? The next benefit of looking back is it deepens your spiritual maturity. Hallelujah. Psalm 77 verse 11 says, I remember the works of the Lord. Surely I remember the wonders of old. I've quoted the scripture earlier. But see what he now said next. He said, I will meditate on your work and talk of your deeds. So remembering those miracles, meditating on those past events that the Lord has, you know, resolved for you, makes you mature. As you mature in faith, you're maturing spiritually. The next benefit of looking back is that it helps instill humility and dependence on God. You just know that running around will not cut it, that depending on man will not cut it, that it is God and only God that will bring you out of that challenge. If God can't, no one can. So looking back, reminding yourself of past miracles, counting those blessings, and you realize, man, I remember that time. It was as if the world was going to come down on me. It was as if the sky was going to fall on me. But God came true. He strengthens you. You humble yourself. Hallelujah. The next one, as we are ending today's talk, is that it encourages the next generation. There was something God was so careful to do with the Israelites. He kept on telling Moses and Joshua, always tell, this, tell the people to tell their children and their children's children the stories of God's deliverance from Egypt. So it became a culture. So they tell those stories when they are home, when they are gathered as a family, when they are seated on the dinner table, they are always telling the stories of God's miracle. You also read the Bible, you see the man that preached on the day of Pentecost, Peter, also recounting those stories. You see Stephen, when he was being about to be stoned, he went back again, started telling the stories. You see Paul, when he was in front of Agrippa, Felix, Festus, he kept out, they will go back again and talk of God's deliverance. So it became a culture of recounting the miracles of God. That was their folklore. You know, the way we have, have our old folklore, their old folklore was talking about the miracles of Egypt, the miracles of the Red Sea, the miracles of, this, of, the, of the wall of Jericho, the miracles of the giants. They, there was their folklore. Imagine having those stories as your folklore. It makes God big in your eyes. It brings encouragement. So from generation to generation to generation, they tell those stories. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Psalm 78 verse 4 to verse 7, I won't finish reading it. Verse 4 says, we will not hide them from our children. Hide what? These stories, the past miracles. Say, telling to the generation to come the praises of the Lord. And we should also cultivate that attitude of telling our children how God helped us in certain times, in times like this, when we had these tough times, when we had this hard time, how God came through from us, for us. He said, and his strength and his wonderful works that he had done so that they, our children, will set their hope on God. You see, it instills faith in the children. Oh, if God did this for my parents, for my mom, for my dad, I'm going to put my trust in that God. So the God of my father will be my God. Isn't that amazing? And he went on to say that not only will he instill hope in them, it will also help them keep the commandments of God. One way to make your children follow your footsteps when it comes to worship of God is by telling them the benefits of God. And finally, one of the benefits of looking back is that he helps us avoid sin and unbelief. Paul talked about this in Hebrews chapter 3. 
and chapter 4, where he took us back again to the Israelites in the wilderness, how they all perished for lack of faith. They all perished for unbelief. And he's saying, guys, do not be. <laughs> do not be like them. He said in verse 7 of chapter 3, he says, if today, if you hear my word, if you hear my voice, do not harden your heart as your fathers did in the wilderness. They hardened their heart. When God tested them and tried them, they hardened their hearts. And they all were tested, tried for 40 years, and they all died in the wilderness. So it helps us avoid past mistakes. It helps us avoid sin. It helps us avoid unbelief. Like I said, we are all human. Challenges come. We just don't remember past miracles. And it affects our faith and belief in God. By recounting his mercies, his goodness, builds up faith in us. And we can stand knowing that if God has done it once, he will do it again. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for your word. I ask that you write it on our hearts.